Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Martin Freeman Show. First, we have pop sensation Justin Bieber. And then we have uh, award-winning artist Bob Dylan. And finally, we have psychologist Dr. Turner Richardson. Right, so absolutely wonderful to have you all. Absolutely wonderful. So this is quite the couch here we have. We have pop star, pop star, and, uh, well, psychologist. Um, so, Justin, how is the bit? What's going on out there? I mean, it's chill, man. You know, after the whole incident with Selena, I started with the man in the mirror uh, to figure out where I was at in my life. I took a break from uh, the spotlight. I released a Grammy-nominated album, and I'm currently touring the world. Yeah, I'm taking like every day step by step, trying to keep my head on, on right in a business that, that's so wrong. So, we've heard that you're coming out with a new album, is that true? I mean, that's always up for debate. My team and I are, are the only ones who really know what's up. Uh, am I writing? Yeah, I always am. I mean, I released two collabs last year with DJ Snake and, and Major Lazer. I mean, I love collaborating, so I bet you can expect to see some more soon. How much do you think your music influences your audience? I mean, I think it influences people a lot. Look, I'm aware of the following of young girls I've attracted. I know that being an attractive male uh, in the music industry is a plus. And I'm not perfect. I've made mistakes. But like I said earlier, I'm not trying to break the, the good guy image I, I was given so many years ago, like, like other pop sensations. My album purpose was almost a rebirth so to speak, of the kind of artist I want my fans to see me as. I want to be acknowledged for, for the art I'm producing and for messages I'm trying to send. I'll admit purpose was a way for me to express what I've been through in the past eight years of my life. Uh, and my song like Sorry, you know, with lyrics, is it too late now to say sorry? Um, I know that I let you down, is it too late to say sorry now? Was my chance to right my wrongs. I'm telling people that it's okay to make mistakes as long as you own up to them and learn. Uh, you know, I'm asking for forgiveness or, or in a song like Company when I'm only asking for conversation, not reminiscing about partying all night and waking up with a stranger in my bed after a one night stand. You know, and, and I'll show you. I admit to my wrongs you know, with lyrics like, this life's not easy, I'm not made out of steel. Don't forget that I'm human, you forget that I'm real. Um, I'll show you, and, and sometimes people just forget that I'm not this plastic cutout, and I don't make mistakes because I do. My music doesn't reflect the bad decisions I've made, and I don't encourage my fans to do things that they'll regret. All I want for them to do is grow into this, you know, into amazing beings, and prove all those who doubted them because I know what it feels like. Wow. Okay. Uh, so I heard that we have a, a clip out there. All right, production team, go for it.
an album. Out. So, Justin, what kinds of what kinds of themes does your album talk about? I mean, it talks about like me growing as a person. Does it include relationships I've had, mistakes I've had? Yeah. I mean, I don't explicitly talk about like sex and and drugs. I mean, in the past, yes, but I'm trying to reshape the kind of artist I want people to look at me as. No violence or irresponsibilities at all? Just none of that? No. No? That's really? That's not the music I, I enjoy talking about, and I don't, I don't promote that stuff. Oh. Um, well, I'll tell you what. So, we've also had Eminem on the, on the show, and he was also telling your, his life story, and it was full of violence and all kinds of things. Um, well, well, I'm not Eminem. <laughs> you have a point there. But, um, right, so what, let's move on. So, Bobby. Bobby Dylan. Bobby uh, Dylan. I've heard that you've won 10 Grammys and a, a Nobel Award? Yes, I'm very, very, very pleased to receive this Nobel Award. I was never expecting this. I uh, never dreamed of being a Nobel Laureate. Uh, Any more than dreamed of being the first person on the moon. Oh, um, and uh, when you when you received this Nobel Prize, did you, you didn't go get it, did you? I didn't, I didn't. I just regret that some nights, but other nights I don't. Yeah, and you, I remember this, this story coming out, uh, and you just told the news that you had absolutely no intention of going out and getting that. Um, so why, why, did you, why did you feel that way? Well, the reason I felt that way is complex, and I'd rather not discuss it here. But there is something else that I would like to discuss in front of all these viewers, and that's the meaning of all my songs. In all my work, I've been trying to encapsulate this one idea about the human experience, in love, and violence, and death, and satisfaction, and awkwardness, and sociality. And all of my songs have meant to capture these essential ideas. And that's right. You started in the 60s during the uh, the social revolutions, like the, the civil rights movements and other things like that. Can you talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. So during the 60s, you know, it was just a crazy time. You, know, you had riots going on in Berkeley. You had the new MLK movement, the civil war, or the civil rights movement, excuse me. Uh, but it was this period of total uprooting. And I had this tremendous power as an artist to redefine the genre, the genre that w had been so steadfast in you know, the, the classics into this new thing where we could express the true meaning that was for ourselves, life. You know, so that's what I try to do in my songs, like, like, in a, like, in a, like a Rolling Stone, try to uproot that traditional idea of fame and glamour and grandeur. All of these ideas, even when I'm talking about violence specifically, I talk about how Satan can come as a man of peace. I'm never trying to promote these bad ideals. I'm just trying to expose the world as it really is. And in any way, I hope my viewers can relate to it and not be influenced by it. Absolutely wonderful. And writing about these controversial topics, did you ever receive hate mail like Justin does all the time? <laughs> um, just talk about that a little bit. Just Well, I think any artist receives hate mail for their works. You know, no one can please everybody. But the thing that's important to me is that I've been sincere and I've been honest in everything that I've done. And everything that I've written has been coming straight out of my soul. And that's important to me. I'm sincere and honest, and that everything that I write and sing and play is coming straight from the heart. And everything there is to be true by that. And so, since you're writing about these controversial topics, do you ever get concerned about your safety at all out in public? Oh, of course I get concerned. You know, it's a different time now. It wasn't like the 60s when, you know, these ideas about these crazy violent outbursts just didn't exist like they do today. Uh, but at the same time, I still have this like, general faith in humanity and the people that we are to one another. Every day on the street that I see, you know, giving money to homeless people, that kind of thing, I have faith in humanity and the general consanguinity of the human race in order to be better than that. Wonderful. And you've also been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. How does that feel to be? It's incredible. Just like being a Nobel laureate, it's never something I could have anticipated. But to be honest, the thing that's really important to me is getting my music out there and making sure that the way I feel is shared with all these beautiful people. That's fantastic. And you're also, you have written songs like folk and blues and country and some jazz as well, so you're quite the varied artist. Um, your, your music clearly isn't all that violent, and every once in a while it'll pop up. But um, you've also had some conflicts at your, at your concerts before, correct? Yes, yes, that's very true. Uh, a lot of those conflicts I don't want to go into now because I don't want to be promoting that kind of thing. But I just like to say that it's an ugly aspect of being a person. And I'm not going to pretend like that kind of thing doesn't exist. But at the same time, if you look at that, it just appears to be a speck on the grand scale of 
human race. I mean, if you look at the actual percentage of people who, who display these kind of violent tendencies uh, that are correlated with our fan base, over 97% of them don't display any of these kind of violent tendencies. And that's something that's really important to me, and that's something that I'm proud of, is that the people who follow me and listen to my kind of music are generally not violent because of the, just the lyrics that I try to express. Wonderful. And so, Dr. Richardson, you've been also researching music for the for several years, and you're a world-renowned psychologist. Um, can you explain what kinds of things happens in, in these violent situations at these concerts? Yeah, so I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, and just as Bob was saying, um, it's not usually, you know, an entire group that's violent because of music. It's usually one individual, so a very small percentage. And we can trace this back to some of the three uh, core concepts in psychology, uh, classical conditioning, operant conditioning, and social cognitive theory. Um, so just to start, I mean, with social cognitive theory, um, we're trying to look at, especially like we saw in uh, Bob Dylan's uh, concert, um, we're seeing these violent thoughts uh, as they appear uh, when you observe others. Not when you listen to the music, but when you see others around you starting to get violent, you start to feel these violent tendencies. So, I mean, as we saw in Bob Dylan's concert, it's not the lyrics that he was singing. It was because someone had maybe an issue with uh, another person there or, you know, the interaction in that environment caused some violent tendencies. And we can see many of those cases in history like uh, right before Bob Marley's uh, Free Smile uh, concert in Jamaica, when he was shot, um, it wasn't because of the lyrics he was saying, even though he has some songs depicting revolution, it was because of the tension in the government at the time, and because, um, and he even quoted uh, saying this, um, large crowds tend to be more violent than small crowds. Wonderful. And um, so, as a psychologist, do you ever research what sides of the brain control more these violent, violent tendencies, or which sides can listen to the musical, the the artistic side of these uh, of these psychological experiments? Yeah. So um, most of the time, uh, when you listen to music for the first time, your brain actually can't process. Uh, the music in two different forms of lyric and beat. It can't separate the two because it's uh, it's not conditioned to uh, process that complex of a um, of a sound. Um, so when you listen to music for the first time, uh, what's actually happening is you're t starting to tie the beat and the lyrics together. So really, it doesn't matter what the lyrics are unless you really start to get an ear for exactly what the message is. So yeah, there is the opportunity to sit down and really focus on the lyrics, but most of the time you're tying the beat in with the lyrics. So it doesn't always depend on how violent the lyrics may be if the song still has a happy tune. So I actually ran this uh, experiment back in 2007, um, and there were uh, we were comparing songs um, for just random uh, viewers that we could pull off the streets and actually um, we measured how happy just on a survey each of them felt after hearing some songs and uh, one of the happiest songs that the audience thought they heard was uh, Lily Allen's uh, recently released LDN um, which is actually about uh, crack whores, muggings, and uh, pimps. I was just gonna mention really? it's quite the uh, quite the topics there. Um, yeah and this was this. Where did this study take place? Uh, it New actually New yeah. York, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and so the lyrics had no no correlation with how how the tune felt. Correct? Is that no. So it had a very you know uh, upright beat. It didn't sound you know very depressing at all, except for the lyrics. The lyrics were very deep, and you can see this even in her music video depicting the lyrics. Uh, very graphically, but the beat, I mean, it masked how violent the music may have sounded, so any violence that came from it was not due to the sound of the music. It's a good argument. I've noticed myself from playing in concerts, and there's a famous song, All Along the Watchtower, that's got this very famous droning beat, and you know, you see the people, and they know the lyrics, and they know the chorus, because they know only a few verses, 
So they sing along, and then what they lack is the, the depth and the, the sadness of this meeting of you know, the two people who are sitting there along the watchtower in Vietnam and the struggles that they face. And a lot of that gets lost. I think that I can agree with a psychologist here in that a lot of the time the lyrics get lost to the beat. Absolutely wonderful. Well, we've run out of time for this section. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz next after this commercial break. Thank you for coming, Gilet. Hi, guys. My name is Dr. Turner Richardson, and I'm here uh, with a message sponsored by KQED Public Radio uh, to talk about some of the benefits of listening to classical music, especially as a child. So the first one, decreasing blood pressure. Uh, if you want to keep your heart healthy, uh, starting early listening to classical music, this really tends to calm you down. It helps you focus. Um, in addition, it boosts your memory. So, you know, say you're listening to Mozart as you're studying. Uh, you have a test the next day. You can remember this uh, information better when you're listening to classical music. Um, in addition, it can uh, spark creativity, uh, reduce stress levels, uh, increase brain power, um, and even fight depression, which is uh, one of the more shocking pieces of information uh, because usually people tend to uh, associate music with the message that you're trying to receive from it in the lyrics. But actually, it tends to uh, balance more out with the beat and the individual instruments that are playing throughout the song. So, um, in addition to helping brain power, um, or uh, fighting different emotions that you may be feeling. It can even reduce uh, physical pain because of its tendency to just relax the body and, um, and just help you out uh, mentally in general.